file and wait 21 plus days and then print off a copy of track and confirm from the US Postal Service site. Now if they haven't responded fully and completely to as per your requirements, you can send in a notice of default and notice of estoppel. Once you have sent off the default and estoppel, they lawfully and legally cannot proceed against you as they have agreed to your contract. Simple. They're too busy to, to respond in the first place and they don't want to let the cat out of the bag by explaining the system, how the system works to get you under contract. Which would be, you signed the driver's license and as, as you signed the driver's license you agreed to be, obey all the vehicle code laws, right? But do you think they really want to come out and tell you that? Because they didn't tell you that when you signed the license. They didn't expressly commit to you a full disclosure that if you signed up for the license that you would have to obey all the vehicle code laws and that two, you didn't have to get the license because you weren't engaging in commercial activity. Or that if you didn't engage in commercial activity there was no requirement to get the license. See that would be complete honesty. What they did was deceit. Once you have sent off the default and estoppel, they lawfully and legally cannot proceed against you as they have agreed to your contract. If you look up ticketslayer.com on the web, you will find a common law approach very similar that defeats traffic tickets. Now when you go to court, you can show the judge the default and proof of mailings and he has no legal choice but to dismiss. He may try to get you in contract and get you to agree to something, but if you stand firm on the fact that you want a dismissal based on the fact that they don't have a lawful cause of action against you. However, my experience is the courts do not follow the law and I can provide many incidences where they violate the written laws and do it knowingly. The, this, conditional, this process of conditional acceptance and affidavit can be used for mortgage foreclosures, credit card issues, suits against you of any kind, the concept is simple. He who fails to defend agrees. You would be surprised at the liability of making statements in writing and signed under full commercial liability is repulsive to public officials and bank presidents. They are not going to sign their name to anything because if they sign their name to something you can take them to court. Now let's talk about getting your documents into the public record for all to see. Believe it or not, the government is afraid of you and your ability to get your evidence into the record. And so has instructed the county recorder, for instance, to not record any affidavits of status or sovereignty or deeds where you state you are the sole owner of your property even if you've paid for that, even if you've paid off that property entirely. I have had the court refuse to enter documents that are properly formatted into the record by stamping them and stamping my copy because they act as guardians of evidence. Once you get evidence in, they can't say you don't have it. But if they don't allow you to get your evidence in, they can go, hey, we never received anything. There is a way around the county recorder that refuses your documents and it would be to send them off to Texas to the nationalrepublicregistry.com which is a place that will uh, record your documents for all to see. Anybody that goes there can look at all the documents that are recorded there. So that's in the public record. As those guys will turn your documents into a PDF file and put it online for all to see and file stamp the documents and return your originals to you and you can order certified copies if needed. Next, your court clerk who refuses to record your documents can sometimes be overcome by writing file on demand on the top of your court documents. If you write file on demand, they are forced to file it, although not in every case because they, they can uh, deny you your rights because they're the gatekeepers. But they get, they, get, they get themselves in a much trickier position once you know your rights and demand them. If you turn around and leave, they've won. But if you demand your rights, so write file on demand on the top of it. They have an obligation to file stamp them and they, are and they are denied the right to make any legal determination of the validity of the filings, as are the county recorder's office. They can say that they're not in the proper form, 
and you, you know, you should be willing to put them in a form that they accept, but they can't make a legal determination of whether you should be allowed to put those into the record or not. The next thing is to have at least one witness who doesn't speak during the during what you're doing and witnesses the interchange with the clerk and have a voice recorder in your pocket is very helpful to transcribe the interchange later. You will ask the clerk to put it in writing that they have the authority to refuse putting your evidence into the record and then sign it and date it. If they refuse, ask her to have a copy of the bond they were operating under because all public officials are bonded. The head clerk of the court has a bond and if he violates the terms of his uh, job, his bond is revoked. Once his bond is revoked, he can no longer work for the county. The county recorder, the head clerk in the court, and the judges, etc., are all bonded. This is a public hazard bond whose sole purpose is to protect the public against unlawful actions on the part of the public servant. The public servant is required to show evidence of their bond, and if they have violated the terms of their job description, their bond can be awarded to cover damages to the public. In other words, you can sue them, and the money will be paid out of the bond. If they lose their bonding, they are unemployable by the state or county and get fired, as all employees have to be bonded. This is the big stick you can use against them to make sure they comply with doing their duty. I mean, they're public servants, after all. If you don't use documentation, you will have no evidence and you will not get satisfaction. Do not talk to anyone in the, op in the opposing side by telephone. If they call you up, chances are they have somebody else listening on the other side who's going to be a witness for them. And they're going to try to trick you. And on the phone, it's easy to be tricked into things. The, the, the opposition can have a second witness listening to the conversation and oftentimes you will say things without thinking them out. This is a great tool to get you into contract or agreement without your voluntary agreement. If they call, simply say, quote, I don't conduct any business on the phone, but I will respond to anything you send me in writing with a wet ink signature upon it and hang up. When you get a letter, you can craft a thorough response to it and you can think it over. The county supervisors are the employees of all county employees employers of all county employees, so sending them evidence of the recorder's or clerk court's, court clerk's violations and a letter demanding their policy that they show you where the recorder is authorized to deny your evidence being recorded. You can send a conditional acceptance affidavit to the county supervisors naming each individually in their personal capacity and see what kind of response you get as they are unlikely to want to be sued or leaned for their employees' unlawful actions. As you can see, these administrative remedies can be achieved by typing and sending notices and don't require personal appearances. But even still, they are time consuming. Consider that if each inhabitant of the city sent in one letter that required a response or would have consequences for the city, if they would, they would be overwhelmed and could not function, and would have to cede the fact that the people don't want the kind of actions the government is taking. The majority of inhabitants notice I am not calling them citizens of the United States or residents because those terms define subjects rather than sovereigns. I mean, if you're an inhabitant, that's different. But a resident is somebody who's staying in an area for a short period of time, like a doctor does his residency as a hospital. He's not going to stay there forever. It's not a long-term position. When he's over, with his residency, he leaves. So you're not a resident, and you're not a citizen of the United States. Otherwise, if you want to, if you want to claim that you're a citizen of the United States, then you're not sovereign, and you're subject to the rules of the United States. Or if you're sovereign, then you're not subject to being a citizen. You can choose to be a citizen when you want, because hey, the king can choose to accept benefits or not. The public servants are like private masters when they deny you the fulfillment of your wishes with no proof that they have the authority to do so and without signing their name to their denial. It's like the 60s all over again, question authority. 